What do Deng Xiaoping, Holly Go Lightly, and the Pen BBS 486 all have in common? Welcome back to Panda Pen Club, the fountain pen channel where we hunt down and sniff out the most interesting, fabulous, and accessible fountain pens on the planet. Today, I'd like to review the Pen BBS 486. The Chinese leader, Deng Xiaoping, in his 60s and 70s, thwarted three attempts to destroy him, without which this pen would have been impossible. Pen BBS is a fascinating creation, a pen and ink manufacturer that emerged from or with an online discussion forum for fountain pen aficionados. They started making inks in 2005 with ranges of pens in startling arrays of colors. I'm a contented lurker in the private Facebook group, Taste the Rainbow, which is dedicated to pen BBS. The company has an animated setup to sell the pens outside China, and it operates through an Etsy store run by Baini Zhang. She owns two cats, apparently, respectively named Amber and Nian Gao, the latter meaning rice cake. The former explains one of Pen BBS's most sought after acrylic color schemes, which is called Amber is a Cat. The preoccupation with cats is clearly strong with this one, Luke. Because of course the pen I'm reviewing today is very much signaling an enthusiasm for cats as well. Pen BBS 486's cat roll stop comes in the form of a wonderful golden figurine of a cat. The cat in question is lolling luxuriantly over itself and is covering its mouth with a little paw as if it's giggling at you and it's reclining a bit like a Roman emperor perhaps on what appears to be a pallet of grapes or pomegranates or possibly even just a cushion. It serves the function it proclaims in its name. It stops the pen from rolling and it also creates purchase when you're going to unscrew the tight-fitting cat cap. It's amazing that a pen in such a striking colour and such an elegant shape manages to slip another hugely dominant feature into the bargain. There is no getting away from this little cat. Maybe cats will save us. The fascination we have as a species for ogling cats apparently extends far and wide throughout every tier of societies and far back through time and right up to the present day, that's for sure. A shared preoccupation with feline companions, in fact, may well, <laughs> may well turn out to be the one thing that still coheres us together as a species as our fate are gamed out for us by the improbable and implausible cool, calm, collected, or the outright frothingly insane folk we've shoved in charge of our ludicrous little planet. Here's a sample of a typical discussion I had recently. In fact, it was yesterday. The cats in this discussion, I should add, are used by me too. Conversations on serious topics conducted more or less through the medium of cat pictures. I'm not the only one, however, who thinks cats can be used to unite rather than divide. Famously, Chinese leader Deng Xiaoping used the following proverb in 1962 in a political speech. Deng said, it doesn't matter whether a cat is black or white, as long as it catches mice, it's a good cat. These words spoken in 1962 would come back to haunt him and to torment his family. If you think about the words, they're a philosophy of pragmatism. Cleaving to ideological purity of any kind is not a smart way to formulate a strategy for anything. Chairman Mao certainly interpreted Deng's words this way. And when the Cultural Revolution was launched in 1966 to contain inclinations pointing towards reform, Mao labelled Deng Xiaoping, who he called almost fondly small steel cannon as a nickname. He labelled him the second greatest capitalist road builder in the party. Deng was removed from political posts and sent to work in a school canteen. And then in 1969, at the age of 65, 
Deng, who stood five feet tall, was sent to work in Xinjiang County Tractor Factory in rural Jiangxi province. And he lived in an abandoned army school, 1.5 kilometers walk from the factory. Deng actually excelled as a factory worker. And this was perhaps because, curiously, his role a fitter as a lathe was exactly the same work he'd done at a Le Creuset factory in France in his late teens and he was there on a work study scheme mainly working it turns out. Dung as a skilled lathe operator would no doubt have approved of the characteristically silky shiny and extremely tactile finish of the acrylic resin. Turning pens at a lathe is of course enjoyed by inhabitants of one of the fountain pen world's coolest rabbit holes, those who make their own pens. Capped, it's 22 grams in a gently ovoid, blimp-like, lozenge-esque sort of shape, which extends 143.6 millimeters in length. The cap and the shaft meet in an intensely precise fit that is really satisfying to run your fingers over. A little like the greasy pole that Dung would soon be climbing once again in his political career. Because five years after being sent to the tractor factory in 1973, aged 70, Dung abruptly reascended to the pinnacle of government. He was appointed vice premier with Mao's approval. However, after two years, suspicious and fearful once more, Mao ordered Dung to write a series of self criticisms. And Deng was once again removed from political office. And then, with the second attempt keenly in progress, something no one could plan for happened. Mao died. Deng, although he was never head of state or government, then began the manoeuvres that made him ultimately the most powerful figure in China. This brings me back to our little golden cat, who has managed to perch himself so securely atop the absolutely smooth, but not greasy and otherwise flush surfaces. Pen BBS calls the color scheme on my model of the 486 the Moon River. It's marble in a deeply darkened pine forest teal green in a way that reminds me of, reminds me rather a lot of marbled eggs. It's got a series of chatoyon patches and transparent patches through the cap and the shaft and is generally quite fascinating and beautiful to examine. The cat providing a constant conundrum for your fingers as you roll the pen round and round perhaps. Pen BBS colour schemes always have interesting names. I have no idea the true thinking behind this one but of course it inevitably recalls breakfast at Tiffany's. <laughs> And for me, another famous cat named Cat, who was, well, the subject of much debate. What a slob without a name. Why I look at it, I don't have the right to give him one. And ultimately brought the silly people together. Holly Go Lightly's journey was all about discovering that lip service to total freedom, mindlessly exhibiting its symbols, is going to lead you, us, to chaos and catless, penless, friendless ruin. You're terrified somebody's going to stick you in a cage. Well, baby, you're already in that cage. You build it yourself. This pen, however, becomes even easier to make friends with when you've done the cat's bidding and removed the cat cap and perhaps left it alone to its own devices elsewhere. You stop bothering it. The pen sort of posts, of course, but I don't know why you would. Stand the little cat up somewhere, somewhere you can see it and it can see you, or better yet, put it in a window where it can watch the world go by. The threads, one and a bit turns to open and close the cap, are unobtrusive and smooth. The section is long, smooth and tapering, and there's a little ledge at the bottom for you to rest your fingers gently against. Uncapped, it's a light pen, it's 12 grams and 128 millimeters in length and it sits there comfortably. The nib in mine is a fine with the standard lovely fancy scroll work that you get on Pen BBS fine nibs, stylishly imprinted with the brand name and since 2005 and F. I don't know why or if it's just me but I love the way that Pen BBS nibs point 
stiletto-ish, as I may have quietly indicated already in a review of the delightful Pen BBS 323. This pen comes with a standard international cartridge converter. It is, however, screaming out to be eyedroppered, and that's by virtue of its bracingly impregnable shaft, o-ring and section threading arrangements. I timed it, in fact, and it takes roughly about eight seconds to unscrew the section from the shaft. And there's considerable friction at work as you do so, you can see there. Lastly, of course, I want to get onto the writing sample and how the 486 lays down ink onto the page. But before I get onto that, I want to tell you about the third purported assassination of Deng Xiaoping, which was conducted by a member of the Ku Klux Klan, an attempt which was not without something of an inky conclusion itself. The black cat, white cat proverb tells us a bit about the sort of open mind Deng perhaps possessed. This was the mind after all that had reformulated and repudiated the strictures of communism into a process of reform and opening up of China to trade, known as Gai Ge Kai Feng. This process, this change of tone and environment fostered by Deng, ultimately lifted millions out of poverty. On the other hand, it could be said to have ushered in a preoccupation with money and wealth at the expense of other aspects of life. It also happens to be what enables most of those watching to purchase a pen BBS pen manufactured in Shanghai, unless Unless, like me, you're trying to get hold of something or anything in the colour scheme, Amber is a cat. One of the centrepieces of Deng's unprecedented reforms was a nine-day visit to the US in 1979. He met President Carter and Nixon, interestingly, in Washington, before being given a tour of Coca-Cola in Atlanta, Boeing in Seattle, and NASA in Houston, and in the latter he encountered trouble. Trouble in the form of Klansman and future neo-Nazi Louis Beam. When Beam rushed towards Dung in a hotel lobby, reaching into his coat to pull something out, he was punched to the ground by US Secret Service agent Paul Kelly. Well, he can thank the, the prompt action of me and the other Secret Service people. Dung Xiaoping's position who hadn't said a word throughout the whole trip, in perfect English, said, I do believe the other man's face hurts a lot more than your hand. Although this has been portrayed in various places as an assassination attempt, it would seem that Beam was armed only with a can of spray paint. It just goes to show that black cat, white cat, pragmatism and openness is going to alarm and inflame members of the dominant group in any society. And it must be mentioned as well, Dung's life and leadership is not a shining example of this principle either. Whether it's a neo-Nazi or Mickey Rooney, someone is always going to come along and ruin the party. And this is as good an argument as I can muster anyway to insert reminders about the serenity of cats into our lives. Every single chance we get, whether it's on pen BBS fountain pens, or TikTok, or by persuading a real one to come and live with us. Now, serenely onwards to the writing sample. Four, eight, six. I need to add the word Pentium, Pentium processor. And we can ha you can see we have the hand of fate accompanying us today as our little cat watches on. There's something lovely, soft, smooth, and very, very wet. I always hesitate to word, use the word juicy because I'm never particularly sure what qualifies as juicy. Should this little line or smear of ink extend all the way across the page and perhaps drip onto the floor in order for the nib to qualify as juicy, or I don't know. So I like the ink flow. I like the way it writes. It writes smoothly with a lovely little edge. And I've noticed recently I've been writing my pangram incorrectly. A pangram, of course, is a sentence or phrase that uses all the letters of the alphabet as succinctly as possible. And the pangram I came up with for Panda Pen Club begins with the word lucky, not lovely, because I think it's the U that we need, or maybe it's the K or the Y. But anyway, lucky panda seeks jinxed. 
zebra. Or quick game of whist. You can see the Monteverde California Teal ink. I've loaded this pen with flowing out of the nib just very, very, very easily and gently and pleasantly. And the whole writing experience is really smooth, really soft, really light. The pen, of course, is a mere 12 grams and you just find the pen flying across the page. And that wetness, you can see, really brings out all the possibilities of the ink. It's not perhaps so evident with California teal, but you can see some shades here. Although it's a fine nib, you get, you get a lot of depth from your inks with this pen because of the lovely ink flow. Highly recommended. In terms of size, we have our Lamy up against our Pen BBS. You can see the Pen BBS is pipsqueak longer, but not an awful lot longer. In terms of chuckability, it doesn't feel fragile, despite having this additional object skewered onto it. It's there firmly. I mean, I wouldn't want to yank away at it, but I think it scores a very, very low on the chuckability scale, uh, maybe a two out of five, but this is a moral and ethical two out of five, because if you're inclined to chuck this poor little cat anywhere, then you're a monster. And what do Deng Xiaoping, Holly Go Lightly, and the Pen BBS 486 all have in common? They express a sense of freedom through cats. If you enjoyed this review, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Panda Pen Club on YouTube. And when you press subscribe, please click the bell. It really helps us. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.